Last time we calculated the efficient frontier in Excel. This time I build on that and identify two key points on that efficient frontier. The point that represents the minimum amount of risk for the portfolio and the point that can be considered the optimal construction of it. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Let's first get a quick overview of the process so that you can more easily follow what I'm doing in Excel. So in the previous episode, we constructed what's known as the minimum variance frontier, which is represented by the green curve on this chart. This time we will quantifiably identify the point of minimum risk, which is sometimes termed the global minimum variance portfolio. And it isn't possible to construct a portfolio in a way that has a lower risk than this value. So let's now start from where we finished in the last episode. So this table represents the results from the minimum variance optimization where we looked at different weightings for the two stocks we were considering, which were Cisco and Pfizer. And then we calculated the portfolio standard deviation and the portfolio expected return for all of those different combinations. And then when you plot these values on a chart, this is what you obtain, the minimum variance frontier. So the next thing I want to do is to calculate quantifiably the value at the leftmost side here, which will represent the global minimum variance portfolio. And this process will tell us exactly what the weightings need to be between Cisco and Pfizer to achieve that minimal risk level. So my starting point here is the percentage for Cisco. And then because this always needs to add up to 100%, I'm going to enter a formula for Pfizer, which will be one, minus this value and we get 50%. So if I change this to say 40, then Pfizer will automatically change to 60 so that they add up to 100. Next, we're going to calculate these values for the values we have here. And I'm just going to use the equation we had last time and paste that in and likewise here. So with 40 and 60, this should give us the same values that we have here, which it does. And then again, as we change these values, these will automatically update. So with that in place, we're now going to use a tool within Excel that's called Solver in order to find that value. So it's quite simple to set up. We first need to set the objective and the objective is to minimize the value of the portfolio standard deviation. So that is represented by this value here. And we want to set that to minimum. And the cell that we want to change in order to achieve that is this value here. So if we click on solve, we can see that it found a solution. So we'll keep that. And the solution that it found was that by having a portfolio consisting of 73% of Cisco stock and 27% of Pfizer stock, that gives us this minimum value here of 1.124. Now, just to make sure that that's been done correctly, let's add this value onto the chart. So I'm going to select data, add a new series, 
and we'll call this the global minimum variance portfolio. The X value is of course the standard deviation. The Y value is the expected return, which is this. Click on OK. And so you can now see if I make this a little larger, that the point that's been identified by solver is this point here. And so that gives us the exact values of the weightings in order to achieve that. And so this point now represents the beginning of the efficient frontier, which comes in this upwards direction along here. So we'll leave the calculation of the optimal portfolio until the next episode. Following that, we'll calculate the blended portfolio, which will also incorporate a risk-free asset. And then we'll move into some more sophisticated examples where we'll use three assets and we'll look at how this additional asset affects the calculations. Now, as ever, thank you for your time. If you want to find out more information about DarwinX, then you can click on the DarwinX icon on the bottom right here. But now, until next time, trade safe.